Hello viewers, welcome to our channel. I'm really excited to read this book. Are you? If you didn't subscribe to our channel, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get more updates on our new video. Reading a book by Jim Benton called Franny K. Steen, Mad Scientist, Bad Hair Day. There's also a, like, this is actually supposed to come with this cover. Oh, wait, look at it. This thing. But since it has this over it, I'm just going to throw it away. There. So let's get started. And also, you might see author of Dear Dumb Diary. Which is, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm. Whoops. Chapter 1, Franny's House. The Steen family lived in the pretty pink house with the lovely purple shutters down the end of Daffoldy Street. Everything about the house was bright and cheery, but of course, the outside of the house is never as interesting as what's going on inside it. And inside the house, behind the little round upstairs window, Something interesting was always going on because this was the bedroom of the, of, I mean, bedroom and laboratory of Franny Q. Steen, mad scientist. Last week, for example, Franny developed a, gi a giant seahorse, and the day before that, she worked on a way, on a way to fly based on how bats flap their wings. Those projects became pretty expensive, so Franny needed a piggy bank to save her money in. Of course, being a mad scientist, she created her piggy bank from a real-life pig, which meant that she had to learn all she could about pigs. You got pretty messy. This got pretty messy, but she didn't mind getting messy because that's just what happens when you're doing mad science. Chapter 2 Beauty and the Beastly Mad science isn't just messy. Wait, hold on. Measy? Or, I was just going to say messy. Isn't just messy. Mad science isn't always pretty either. There's nothing pretty about the hamburger that makes it its own ketchup, especially when you bite into it. And nobody ever calls Franny totally curcured or wiener dog pretty. The word most people would use is disturbing. Still, Mom liked the wiener dog better than when Franny invented a spray, a spray on Halloween. spray on Halloween costume that made Franny completely break out in giant warts. It's just so much faster than putting on costume, Franny explained. Mom had to admit that was really fast, but when Franny decided she didn't want to wash off the warts off, her mom felt like she had to talk to her about it. You know why I know Nobody ever wants to pet Igor, which is the actual movie, but it's not about a dog. It's about a monster and stuff, which is a cartoon character. Igor was Franny's lab assistant. He wasn't pretty, he wasn't a pure lab. He was also part poodle, part shepherd, and part some kind of Wesley thing that wasn't exactly a dog. It's because of the way Igor looks. Mom continued. What's wrong with how he looks, Franny asked. Mom stammered. Well, he's kind of, I mean, Igor's not going to win any beauty contests, Franny. And wouldn't you like if he was you? You know, a better looking dog? Igor tried to, to look 
to look better looking. Franny had never noticed anything wrong with Igor's looks. Mom, Igor is beautiful. He doesn't need to win any contests for me to see that. And look, he's a he's an adorable puppy dog. And look at his adorable puppy dog eyes, Franny giggled. Franny held Igor up and he fluttered his eyelashes at her mom. Okay, okay, she said, put him down. Franny, all I'm trying to say is that maybe you might think it's fun to dress up a little associationally or wear your hair different. You might like to be Franny, I mean fancy, sometimes, some fr fancy sometimes. Mom draped a beautiful coat on Franny and looked in the mirror. She started co combing Franny's hair and grabbed a can of hairspray. Do you know what hairspray does, she says? She said as she took, as she shook the can. It holds hair in place. I know, Mom. I just don't. I just don't. Okay, we'll skip the hairspray. But how about a blow dry? Do you know what this does? Her mom said. I'm guessing it does something to your hair, Franny replied. Well, yes, but there's a little more to it than that. Thanks, Mom. But it doesn't, it just doesn't feel like me, Franny said, taking off the coat. I don't think I need to know anything about this stuff. Mom sniffled, I mean smiled, and hugged Franny. Okay, okay, that's perfectly fine. Do what feels right. Okay, okay, that's perfectly fine. Do what feels right. But know that you can always change your mind. You can explore different options whenever you want, she said, and walked out to Franny's laboratory. And walked out of Franny's laboratory. At least don't spray the wards back on, she said. She called from the hallway. Franny looked in the mirror. Does Mom want me to change? She whispered. I wear my special lab suit to protect me from dangerous chemicals. I wear my hair in, in pigtails so it doesn't get caught in machinery. I'll never wear a nail polish because they're, the pretty colors will just cause some creature in the lab to chew off my fingers. Cosmetics, hair stuff. Fancy clothes. They aren't for me, Igor. Igor, I just don't understand them, Franny said. Lightning cracked outside. Wait a second, Freddy said. Do you hear what I'm saying? I understand electricity and dynamite and translucent chemistry, Igor. Igor held a recently modified teddy bear. Yes, Franny agreed and surgically implanting a brain in the teddy bear. I understand that too. The teddy bear smiled. Do you know what? But you know, Igor. Igor. Uh, Igor. Science is also about exploring things we don't understand. It's about researching higher and exploring the unknown. Even if it's the really super weird stuff. Like m that mom's like. Do you see what I mean? I can't ignore something because I, do, I don't understand it. Attracted to me. Attracted me to science in the first place. Igor nodded. Mom's products are super kooky. Igor, but come on, we love kooky stuff. Igor tried to smile and nod in agreement. The, but the truth was he really didn't like cookie stuff, kooky stuff really very much. Tomorrow we, we get as weird as mom. Franny yelled, trim firm to the 
Momology. Blow dryers, fancy stuff, big hugs, solving problems, unknown. Chapter 3. Let's face it. Makeup is, is an interesting thing. Igor, Igor, mom only wears it sometimes, but when she does, it just, it's just the right amount. Look what happens when we put on a little too much. Can you imagine if a clown walked out in front of an audience without enough makeup on it? On? It would be nothing but lovely, and that would be terrible for a clown. That's why I invented this, Franny said, lifting the rather dangerous-looking device. It's my cosmic bazooka. It's filled with regular old make makeup, but it's all carefully measured so that just one blast, you look perfect. Franny pointed at Igor and pulled the trigger. I go duck us in time, leaving a perfectly made up face on the wall behind him. For any gig. Oh Igor Igor, you you act like I never shot you in the face before. Chapter four Franny's nails Franny nails it. Mom likes her nails pop her nail polish too. Igor, Franny said, and began brushing some of her new chemical formula onto her own nails. But I was thinking her fingernails aren't really nails at all, are they? Franny wiggled her fingers at Igor. Watch what my nail polish does. Suddenly a long pointy nail sprang out of Franny's fingertips and she slashed them back and forth in the air. Now these are something special, she said, and she plunged them through two boards, nailing them together. I'll bet Mom would like these, don't you think so? Igor wasn't sure if Franny's mom would like them, but he knew how much he would like, like to have those in the next time he was bullied by the mean cat next door. Franny broke the nails off with a snap and held the board up. Did you see, I mean, and held the board up for inspection. Did you see how fast the, those grew and how long? Igor looked at the nails. They seemed to wriggle. a bit as though they might actually be alive. I have another idea, Franny said. Chapter 5. Teaching Your Dog How to Heal You know how Mom wears those high heels sometimes? They're like three inches tall. Well, if she likes those, I I can make some I can make some she's going to love. Franny carefully placed the shoes on her feet. I made a few adjustments to the formula. She smeared some of those some on the shoes. In seconds the heels erupted into five foot tall spikes. Freddie wobbled as if she walked around the room. What do you think, Igor? Pretty nice, right? Igor scurried, scurried around frantically. He didn't want to get stepped on as Franny modeled her shoes. Just then, Franny caught sight of herself in the mirror. You know, Igor, this stuff might work on lots of other things. Maybe I can make everything grow. She jumped out of the shoes and let them fall to the ground. Igor picked up one, picked one up, and examined it. It didn't wriggle like the fingernails he had. Fingernails had. He dropped it and ran after Franny, who was already busy with the next experiment. 
Chapter 6. Here we go. I made some more adjustments to the formula, Franny told Igor as she handed the bottle, I mean, a little bottle to him. It bubbled and fizzled, and a little cloud of smoke puffed out the top. Put three, put just three drops on onto each pig tail, she said. No more than that. Igor nodded carefully and dripped the formula onto Franny's hair. It tingled, she said, <coughs> and her hair started to frizzle and frazzle, and suddenly a strange creaky whine began to grow. A cr creaky whine it began to grow and grow. It grew until it dropped all around her the floor. All around her on the floor. It worked. It's a success. Franny f tossed her hair around and around so much, so much so that it knocked over the a beaker, then caught the table leg. Then it caught the table leg. She tried to get loose and stumbled into a cage of monsters, knocking the door open and setting them loose in the lab. What a mess! I can't get anything done with this hair everywhere. I go hand me the scissors and and I'll cut these useless stuff out right this minute. Igor could grab the scissors one of before Igor could grab the scissors, one of Franny's pigtails stretched out and grabbed the scissors by itself. It handed them gently to Franny. Whoa, she said. Do you see that, Igor? These pigtails might be pretty good assistance. Maybe I'll keep them around for now. Igor found he was Franny's assistant, and he didn't think she needed any new ones. And I wonder, Franny said. Maybe if we used a couple more drops. Chapter 7. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Franny moved around the lab, suspended and hurt by her pigtails, which walked her around like big, like big fuzzy legs. She used them to grab a device on a very high shelf and a stretch for a beaker that had rolled under a sea monster fishbowl. Isn't that great, Igor? She grinned. I can reach everything. Igor point, pointed at the super tall shoes. Those are great, but shoes aren't alive the way hair is. They can't move on their own. Igor scrawled. I know what you're, you're thinking, Igor. This experiment was supposed to be all about monsters. So why would mom be interested in living pigtails? Well, watch this. Franny snapped her fingers and and her hair, I mean, her pigtail sprang into a brand new hairdo. She snapped again, which it changed into another style. With each snap, they became something new. They became something new. Wow. Now you know Mom is going to love that, Franny said. So much faster than fiddling around with her hairspray and brushes and blow dryers and stuff. Chapter 8. Franny's hair lets her down. Late that night, Igor was a Awakened by the sound of somebody rattling through cabinets. At first, he wasn't worried about it. He figured it was probably just the monster stirring in their cages. But as he opened slowly, he saw that one of Franny's pigtails had stretched all the way over the shelf, which kept her formula.
The pigtail was trying to get the bottle op open when Igor pounced. He tried as hard as he could to wrestle from its hair, from its hair grasp. The scuffle woke up Franny, who jumped out of the bed to see what was the matter, trying to sneak more of the pot that wrote for formula at Franny asked, and she shook her head sadly. I'm disappointed in you, but not very surprised. I know all about pigs, and I learned that pigs are greedy by nature. I guess pigtails are too, she said. She patted Igor. Good job, Igor. I'll do something about these two, these two little pig, pig, piggies in the morning, she said, and walked sleepily back to her bed. Chapter 9 Sheer Madness The next morning, Franny shuffled into the bathroom to brush her teeth and wash her face. But when she looked in the mirror, something was different. My hair, she shrieked as she charged out of the bathroom. Igor, what happened to my hair? Igor didn't answer. We're going to stop at this part. We're going to read part two soon. See you later. Chapter 9. Sheer Madness. The next morning, Franny shuffled into the bathroom to brush her teeth and wash her face. But when she looked in the mirror, something was different. My hair, she shrieked as she charged out of the bathroom. Igor, what happened to my hair? Igor didn't answer. He wasn't in bed. He wasn't playing in the bathtub. He wasn't watching cartoons on his on her computer. Finally, she found him tied up by a thick cluster of her own purple hair. Those pigtails must have cut themselves off my hair, off my head, shouted Franny. Shout, she shouted. Freddy went to, to examine the bottle of growth power, I mean growth formula. <sighs> and I'll bet they doused themselves with more of this stuff. Franny ran to the window and looked through her telescope. I see them. They're all. They're. They're in town already, she yelled. Gosh, they're so fast. I'll never catch them on foot. She ran downstairs and found Mom watching something on the news. Reports are coming from all over town, Mom said. From beauty salons and barber shops. Two strange beads are on the ramp. Be beasts are on the rampage. They say they're two large pigtail, pig-like creatures that are eating everything. Franny's mom looked at her sternly. Franny, you wouldn't know anything about this, what do she say? Mom, it's two weird creatures on a rampage, Franny said. Of course I know something about this rampage. Rampaging creatures are kind of my thing. They're basically pigs, Mom. Don't worry. All they want to do is get bigger, Franny said. They're made out of hair, and that's all they are after. They're just going to go after people's pets, and when those are gone, they'll maybe start eating the hair on people's heads. Maybe they'll chew off beards of men's face. Franny laughed. So it's not everything. That still sounds pretty bad, Franny. Franny. Franny, Mom said. Maybe somebody else should handle this, her mom added hopefully. Maybe these are somebody else's rampaging creatures. Oh, they're my pigs, all right, and I'm sure that nobody can stop them but me. Franny dug through a drawer, but I'll need a rubber band. You're going to defeat them with a rubber band, Franny's mom howled. There's no time to explain, Franny said fiercely. And she pulled what was left of her hair into a ponytail and quickly twisted the rubber band around it. Chapter 10. Igor Gets Popped. Franny dribbled a couple of drops of, of her formula onto her, her ponytail and grabbed her scissors. Franny's mom watched the amazement of Franny's ponytail turned into a full-size pony. 
Frey snipped it off and climbed onto its back, then grabbed her mom's purse as she galloped out the front door. Igor started to follow her, but she paused as she shouted back at him. You're too deliciously furry. They'll gobble you up. Stay here with mom. Franny then reared up on her ponytail and galloped out of sight. As Franny got closer and closer to the pit tail, she saw the destruction they have left in their part path. On the streets lay dolls without bur braids, peaches without fuzz, and completely bald cat pillars. How much hair can these things eat? By the time she caught up to them, they were munching the wig store. A wig store. Hold it right there, pigs, Franny shouted. Her pig girl stopped eating and ran toward her on her beautiful pony. She pulled out her mom's cordless bow dryer, bl I mean blow dryer, and hit them with its full force. I'll bet this will make you more manageable, she shouted. But her idea didn't work out as out as she'd planned. It just made the pigtails fluffier and puffier. They were even bigger now than before. I guess I don't know how blow dryers work, Franny said. I should have paid more attention to Mom. Back at home, Igor rocked, watched in her horror as the pigtails loomed over Franny on TV. He raced up the stairs, grabbed something from Franny's lap, and bottled out the door. Franny frowned as the big hairy pigtails Harry big pit pigtails as they pinned her ag ag up against the wall. Get behind me, pony ponytail, she said, trying to protect it from the pigtails. I won't let them get you too. One of the pigs snarled and lunged for her ponytail, whined and jumped in in front of her, jumped in front of her. The pig swallowed in one gulp, one oinky gulp. That was one really nice hairdo, Franny said, as the second huge pig swelled up and growled at her. This looks like the end, Franny said to herself, and she shook her fist at the monster. Okay, then, come and get me. But just then, Franny saw Igor raise up behind the pig. Why is he so tall? He, she said to herself. Chapter 11, your hair is really messed up. Igor wobbled around awkwardly on, a high, on the high heels. He was trying to sneak up on the pig with a pair of scissors. Amazing! He must have put more formula on the shoes. That's why he's so tall, Franny thought. But that's one even more amazing. But that's one even. That's what's even more amazing, Franny said to herself. Is that dog in part in pair in pair of thirty four for thirty foot heels? Thinks he can sneak up on anybody? The pigtail spun around, and with a single snap, he. Plucked Igor right out of the shoes and swallowed him whole. No! Franny cried. Igor! The destruction gave, gave Franny and just enough time to hide behind a trash can. Igor did that to save me, Franny whispered, her eyes welling up with tears. He would have done anything for me. He would have done anything for anybody. She she watched as the pigtail sniffed the air and began shambling down the street. They they want more hair, she whispered. No more Miss Nice Girl. These pigs need to be stopped, and I bet I know where they're be they're headed. The zoo. Chapter twelve. We're in pig trouble now. 
Franny chased after the pigtails. I have no idea how I'm going to stop these things, she said. I have to think. The, the pigtails crashed through the front gates of the zoo and walked right past the alligators and tortoises. They, they don't have borders, so the pigs aren't interested in them, Franny said. She watched as the pig stopped to read a sign. One of them licked its lips as he did. Not one of the organelids. Organtans. Orangutans. Franny whispered as the pig waddled off toward the apes in just in just spiritual Franny rushed up and grabbed a handful of one of the pigtails. She yanked it as hard as she could. Nobody likes to have their hair pulled. With one made a swat, the pig knocked Franny aside. Franny sat up and groaned. I really messed up this time. And then she heard scissors snipping and snipping. Franny stood up and and stared as she saw a little pink paw holding scissors and snipping its way out of the back of one of the pigtails. It was Igor that snipped his way out and so that the pigtails wouldn't want to swallow him again. And he also snipped off all of his hair while he was in there. He stood there and held up the scissors proudly. He looked Trumfled, pink, and naked. One of the, the pigtails turned around and around and looked at him. Ew, it said, and kept walking toward the orangutans. Granny ran up and hugged him. Don't listen to that pig, he, she, she said. You're beautiful. Igor handed her the scissors and pointed at the pigtails. I can't do much with these, she said. They're a little too, they're too little. But you're right. We have to do something. After they eat the orangutans, they'll be, they'll go for the buffaloes and the bears. Igor handed her the backpack of things he brought from the lab. Freddy dug through it. I think I have an idea, she said. Chapter 13. Split ends. The pigs climbed over the fence and into the orangutan enclosure. The orangutans covered and squealed in fear. One of the pigs reached out a big hairy hoof and grabbed the tiniest orangutan and lifted it up to its mouth. This has to work, Igor, Franny said. We don't have much time. We don't have much of this left. She pulled a mascara bottle of the backpack, dipped a tiny brush in the formula, and carefully applied it to Igor's eyelashes. Long lush la la lashes erupted from his eyelids. Now let's see those beautiful puppy dog eyes, Franny said and giggled. Sprung! Igor began flapping his lashes and, and Franny hopped onto his back. The two rose up into the sky, lifted by our, Igor's masterful fluttering. Head for those pigs, Franny growled. They swooped over and grabbed the orangutan just before the pig could swallow it. Surrender now, Franny said, or be glad. The pig hissed at her as Igor flew around and came at them fast. The pig tails lunged and twish, twist, trying to grab Fran, Franny and Igor as they zigzagged around the weight waving in and out until the pigtails fell over on the ground, wriggling 
and, snor and snorting and gorgeously braided and braided. Gorgeously braided. Igor dived down to the ground as Franny shook a hairspray can. As soon as they get close enough, Franny blasted the pigs with a cloud of hairspray, holding them in that position, unable to move. Igor landed next to them, and Franny stuck her finger in the bottle of formula. I'll bet there's uh, just enough left. She pulled out her finger, and a giant sharp nail sprang from the end of it. This won't hurt a bit. This won't hurt a bit, pigs, she said. And y and she cut away strands of hair until her ponytail wriggled and snuggled her, thank her thankfully. Let's get home. I have a little work to do in the lab. Chapter 14, The Tale Comes to an Eighth. And Franny's mom walked into the Franny laboratory. Laboratory. Nice work on those pigtails, she said. Th Thanks, Mom. Of course, you probably shouldn't have created them in the first place. Franny laughed. You're right, Mom. But things like that happen to people all the time. Franny shrugged. They don't, Franny. They don't, Franny. Things like that don't happen to people all the time. Things like that only happen to you. Franny showed her mom her mom a jar with old pigtails in it. Look, I washed the formula out of some of the leftover hair and constructed brand new pigtails for myself. They're perfectly normal. Now, I'm going to reattach them. Franny put her pigtails back into place and and shook her head to make sure they were stuck. What happened to your ponytail, Mom asked. I wanted to go back to the zoo. I think... What happened to your ponytail, Mom asked. He wanted to go back to the zoo. I think I fell in love with that baby orangutan. Franny, Franny's mom smiled. Oh, and I have a surprise for you, Franny said. And she ran to get something from the closet. She handed her mom a purple fur coat. I used some of the giant pigtail and and I made you a fur coat. You can change the style too by snapping your fingers. This isn't going to try to eat anybody, is it? Nope, the pigtails were greedy because they were pigs. The greed was the problem, not the hair. But I got rid of the greediness. Now they're delighted just to make somebody happy by being a coat. Franny's mom tried on the coat. This is, it's lovely, but how do you get rid of the greed, she asked. I added a dash of Igor's fur. He's the least selfish creature in the whole world. The greed just went away. Franny's mom looked at the graph. She felt a little ashamed. You were right about Igor all along, Franny. I wasn't looking for him in the right way. He is beautiful. Maybe the most beautiful dog that ever lived. Franny's mom looked around. Hey, where is Igor anyway? I sent him to the store to pick up a few things. I was thinking to try that new shampoo you suggested. He won't be long. He won't be long. The store. But I thought he was afraid or walking past that mean cat next door. I don't think that's going to happen. That's going to that's going to be a problem anymore, Franny said. The end. So this book was Fred and Kaysteen, Mad Scientist, A Bad Hair Day by Jim Benton from the New York Times best-selling author, author of Dear Dumb Diary. So...
I'll see you in our next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, comment your opinion, and give a thumbs up. I'll see you in our next video. Bye!